Welcome to this week's Rutherford County Prep Football Preview, presented by Good Neighbor State Farm Agent Celeste Middleton. Auto, home, any insurance needs, call her at 895-2700 or go to CelesteMiddleton.com. State Farm Agent Celeste Middleton truly cares. Brian Barrett here with you. Thursday football, Friday football. We actually on WGNS have two football games this week. Thursday night, headed to Middle Tennessee Christian School as they wrap up the regular season with Ezel Harding. Friday night, it's the Battle of the Borough, Oakland hosting Riverdale. So let's jump right into the offerings that are on the slate here this week. On Thursday night, it's Smyrna on the road at Cane Ridge. This one is usually circled in Region 5-6A as the region championship. Not so this year. This year, Smyrna's already wrapped up the region championship. They played for it last week at Antioch, and the uh, Bulldogs already locked up that region championship with their win last week. So, still a lot to play for for Cane Ridge. If you're Smyrna, don't get anybody hurt. That's uh, uh, key number one. It's also nice to uh, rack up wins against Cane Ridge as they have inflicted pain on the Bulldogs year after year after year. So uh, let's see what they can do on the road at Cane Ridge. Danny Brewer is going to go there and bring us some reports during our broadcast of MTCS on Thursday night. Eagle Bowl will travel to uh, our Eagle Bowl will host uh, Cornersville, and that is uh, a, a Region 5-1A matchup. Uh, Eagle Bowl big win last week over Richland, 33 to nothing. And, um, you know, they would lock up. Um, if they lose, they're going to have to have some help. But if they win tonight, they will uh, actually lock up a playoff berth. This is a Cornersville team that has a Mr. Football candidate on there. So, man, I tell you, it's going to be a very tough contest for uh, the Eagle Bowl Eagles. We'll see if they can – uh, ride some stout defense, but it's going to be a very tough game for them. We'll see what happens in this one. Uh, may have to have some help to get into the playoffs, especially if they don't win this football game on Thursday night. So we'll see. Middle Tennessee Christian School, of course, uh, taking Ezell Harding. We'll tell you a bit more about that game coming up. Providence Christian Academy hosting the Web Feet. Web winless on the year. I think PCA gets the win here in this one and uh, will have a 5-5 five and five record in their first year in playoff football So, or in uh, TSSAA 11-man football. So very nicely done by LeBron Ferguson and squad. So the Cougars clinching a number one seed in the playoffs at 8-1. Um, and one. They'll be 9-1 and one after the Thursday night game and will improve their region record to 4-0. and oh. Yates Guerin coming into the game, 31 of 58 passing for 388 yards, five touchdowns, just two interceptions. He's rushed for 300, make that uh, 632 yards and eight TDs on 83 carries. But we know who the guy that's been carrying the mail, right? 84 carries, 1,304 yards for Eli Wilson, averaging 16 yards per carry and 163 yards per game seven 100-yard-plus games this season that he has played in, and this would be uh, game number 10 coming up. So all but uh, two games, right, with a chance for another 100-yard game, maybe tonight or Thursday night whenever you're watching this. 21 touchdowns for Eli Wilson. I think he's going to be uh, Division Two, Mr. Football Candidate. 21 touchdowns for him, and uh, don't want to um, – Look at uh, some other guys who've got some pretty impressive stats in the backfield as well. But you can't overlook that 1,300-plus yards there. But uh, Gabe Howell and uh, Brooks Jones as well in the backfield. Receiving core, some pretty substantial uh, yardage racked up for Briggs Boyd and uh, Grant Hawson as well as uh, several others. So MTCS is going to be um, – taking on a pretty young Ezel Harding team this year. And Ezel coming into the contest four and five, just one and two in league play. Elijah Donnell, their quarterback, has passed for 738 yards, 44 of 88, so right at the 50% uh, mark, has rushed for 206 yards on 50 carries. In the backfield, they've really kind of split time between senior Noah Wilson 
and freshman Jaden McDonald, or McKnight, rather, pardon me. And uh, the most of the receiving yards have gone to senior Kalon Robinson. 22 catches for 386 yards, four TDs, averaging about 48 yards per game receiving. So we'll have the broadcast for you. Primetime Sports presented by Ideas Tees will be on the air beginning at 6 o'clock. Then at 6.50, we'll have a shortened pregame show right before we uh, have the broadcast for you at 7 o'clock. A few defensive leaders for MTCS. Uh, Brooks Jones, 107 tackles on the season, eight for loss, two sacks as well. Seth Harris with 67 tackles, 10 for loss with one sack and one interception. And Jackson Highfield with 53 tackles, four for loss, one interception, and two forced fumbles. So pretty good uh, MTCS team, not only on on offense, but defensively as well. So that is a look at the Thursday slate of games. Well, what happens on Friday? Some big, big games on Friday coming up as well as it's the last game of the regular season. We'll save our conversation about the Battle of the Borough coming up here at the end. Siegel at Rockvale. This game has a lot of implications, right? Siegel um, is going to either finish third or they're going to finish out of the playoffs, right? So Siegel will finish uh, third if they can beat the Rockville Rockets. And Coffee County, they could finish third if uh, Coffee County gets a win over Blackman as well. The Rockets are in the playoffs, and they're playing for either third or fourth. Blackman can get in with a Siegel loss. The Stars have, um, after starting 4-0, have lost five in a row, and it could be six in a row after Thomas Santel went out with uh, the injury. And Rockvale's kind of going the other way. They've won three in a row, and we'll see what happens uh, in this one tonight. But um, Thomas Santel's injury, season-ending injury for football, was really, really tough on the Seagull Stars. Speaking of Coffee County, they got their second win of the season. It was a non-league win last week versus Udawa. But they've got the Blackman Blaze, and Blackman really wants to uh, prove something. Um, they dropped a very tough game last week. They thought they really had it uh, maybe in hand, getting the upset win at Rockvale. That one slipped by, and they lost 27-22. to And uh, Coffee County put some points on the board against Udawa last week, so that one could be interesting. 3-6 and six Blackman, 2-7 and seven Coffee County. Antioch, team that lost... If you look at it from their perspective, a very tough game to the Smyrna Bulldogs taking on the Laverne Wolverines. And Laverne is in a situation where there are no playoff possibilities for them now. But they are also a team that beat, at that time, 6-1 Green Hill. So this is their last game of the season. It's a playoff possible game for them if you look at it from that perspective. So... Could they be the Antioch? Yes. Would it be earth-shattering if they did? Not really. They beat Green Hill just a few weeks ago, and uh, maybe they look at it from that perspective. Mike Woodward is a great coach. See what they can do. Um, so good luck to the Wolverines as they host their last game of the season at home. McGavick is at Stewart's Creek. The Red Hawks have uh, gotten their playoff berth. They're in their number three seed. And uh, this is one of those games they're taking on one and eight McGavick. You don't want to get people hurt. You want to see what you got. You want to keep people fresh as well. So Stewart's Creek home against McGavick, uh, kind of a tune up for the playoffs. And um, that takes us to the game that everybody has been talking about Riverdale at Oakland. That's the game that's coming up. And we'll have this one on WGNS 630 airtime. And um, we'll be on the air for the primetime sports countdown to kickoff, sponsored by the law offices of John Day, and kickoff at 7 o'clock. So here we go. Battle of the Borough. This is, what, um, the 51st year of this rivalry. Cecil Joyce of the DNJ says only three times in the 51 years of this rivalry has the team with the best record lost. So... Oakland is the team with the best record here. Oakland has, in fact, 
dominated this series of late. There was a time where the record in the series, which is still owned by Riverdale, was a much larger number. So the last, well, let me just kind of put it to you this way. Riverdale still leads the series, but that lead is only nine games. It has been triple digits for a long, long time. But now that series lead is 32 to 23. It was a commanding lead in the, oh, early 2000s, mid-2000s even. But now it's just a nine-game lead. So it's in the single digits now. The last time Riverdale had a win was in 2012. So it's a 12-game win streak right now for the uh, Oakland Patriots. A lot of people have been talking about this game being a high-scoring game. You know, both teams have really good offenses. I, I would say that both teams have a really good defense too, but if it's a high-scoring game, would it be the highest-scoring game? Well, if it is to be the highest-scoring game, it would have to be over 71 combined points because in 1978 – there were 71 combined points scored in a Riverdale 57-14 win back in uh, 1978. There's a really interesting article on the uh, Riverdale website, on their football website, arrowsup.org. You can uh, go to more, and then you can see some Battle of the Borough. All the scores are there, all of the win streaks, which includes Oakland's 12-game win streak, Riverdale had a nine-game win streak from 2001 to 2007. It's got all of that on there. Very interesting stuff uh, that you can find and keep up with. Now, statistically, what does this thing look like? Some very interesting stats. Uh, Oakland Patriots come in. They haven't lost at home in 69 games. The Oakland Patriots have a 58-game region win streak going. They have won 49 games in a row over Rutherford County opponents. And they've got a two-headed monster in the backfield. Ashton Jones, 121 carries for 945 yards, 15 touchdowns. You had Dewan Morris back there with 86 carries, 983 yards, and, let's see, 17 touchdowns. So Morris's 17 touchdowns, Jones' tw uh, 15 touchdowns account for 32 touchdowns, and you combine their rushing yards, 1,928 rushing yards combined. So that is a two-headed monster. The quarterback situation, you've got Kyler Creasy, who was injured part of the season, but he's been coming on strong in his limited – action this season 26 of 47 260 yards two TDs two interceptions sophomore Patrick Freeman 51 of 67 748 yards five TDs three interceptions they have two very capable quarterbacks and their receivers all over the place I mean they have plenty to choose from I want to also mention speaking of getting healthy Avery Hainsworth in three games 20 carries, 101 yards, two TDs. Let me also mention Craig Tutt, sophomore. Not only is he getting some carries and a couple of receptions, defensively, he has been playing lights out as well. On the Oakland defensive side, 60 tackles for Corey Smith. Caleb Ellison, 57 tackles. They're all over the field. Interceptions, forced fumbles. This is a defense that is going to be challenged by the Riverdale Warriors. So what are the Warriors going to throw at you? Quarterback Braden Graham, 163 of 225 passing for 2,400 yards through the air, 33 touchdowns, just one interception, a 72% completion rate, and is averaging 267 yards per game through the air. Well, who are his targets? Two primary targets, Brock Montgomery, UConn commit, 51 catches, 940 yards, 13 touchdowns, and he's got a chance to go over 1,000 yards receiving in the uh, game Friday night. 
on the other side, or maybe sometimes lining up on the same side, is uh, senior Ben Woodruff. I'm sorry, uh, senior Keyshawn Williams. 43 catches, 632 yards, 12 TDs. Ben Woodruff is uh, one of the likely uh, wide receivers. 26 catches for 343 yards, two TDs. Braylon Vanderbilt, Jalen Thompson as well. And you'll see uh, DJ Taylor in the backfield as well. Riverdale pretty good on the uh, defensive side of the ball themselves, led by Traylon Davis's 103 tackles. JoJo Smith, um, Zentrakis Odie, and um, also Morris, Jalen Thompson, Keyshawn Williams on the defensive side. It's shaping up to be just uh, a humdinger of a battle of the borough. It's at Oakland. If you're going, get there early. Uh, they are doing construction just like they are at Riverdale. So um, it's going to be a great night of high school football. For those who have been to Battle of the Burrows past, it is now the last game of the regular season. That's the way it has been in years past. Maybe not in um, the near past, if you will, the last few years. It has been kind of a tradition but not in recent years. It is this year. I kind of like that. That's just me. I guess they'll play it whenever they're told they'll play it. That just happens to be the last game of the regular season. Hope you'll join us on WGNS for that one. 6.30 pregame, 7 o'clock kickoff right here on your good neighbor station. Saturday morning, the Prentice Allsup Heating and Air Coaches Corner. It will be the last time for some of our coaches as we jump into playoffs for those who don't make the playoffs. We will extend our times just a little bit, and uh, we'll just kind of go week to week with some of this as uh, we get into the playoff season. So our show, as always, Prentice also Heating and Air Coaches Corner, every Saturday morning, fueled by Donut Country and McDonald's Murfreesboro. Here's the order of the coaches, 8 o'clock, Riverdale, 8.15, Smyrna, 8.30, Blackman, 8.45, Laverne, 9 o'clock, Oakland, Stewart's Creek at 9.15, 9.30 Rockvale, 9.45 Siegel, and 10 o'clock Eagleville. After the Prentice also Heating and Air Coaches Corner, MTCS Cougar Corner hits the airwaves at 10.15. It's presented by Tennessee Orthopedic Alliance. We'll be talking with Christian Peterson about their Thursday game with Ezel Harding and look ahead to the playoffs for the Cougars. So that's our plan here for Thursday night, Friday night, and Saturday morning. Lots of prep conversation headed your way. Well, that's your Rutherford County Prep Football Preview presented by Good Neighbor State Farm Agent Celeste Middleton. I'm Brian Barrett saying so long until the next time we meet at the game.